Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cube Conversations here in our studio in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, co-host of the Cube, co-founder of Silvangle Media. Special guest today inside the Cube in Palo Alto is Steve Lucas, the new CEO of Marketo, formerly of SAP, industry veteran, a lot of experience in the enterprise space. Now the Chief Executive Officer at Marketo. Uh, welcome to this Cube conversation. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you again. So Marketo has been on our radar. It's been on everyone's radar. It's been one of the hottest marketing companies that have come out of this generation yeah. of SaaS, what I call SaaS cloud uh, offerings, uh, and certainly has bur burned the field in terms of, of reputation, in terms of uh, quality, high customer scale. Um, a lot of other companies have been bought out. You see Oracle doing a lot of stuff. You got Salesforce. The SaaS business is booming. Oh yeah. And you have a rocket ship that you're now the CEO of now for two months. First question, what's it like there now? <laughs> Compare <laughs> SAP to yeah. Marketo, what's, it, what's happening? Well, it's, uh, I mean, SAP's a fantastic company and, and loved it. It's the, the, the kind of metaphor I've used is, it, you know, with, with SAP, it, it's, it's, a bigger, it's a bigger vehicle. You're driving a, a bus and you can carry a lot of people with you. Takes a little bit longer to make a U-turn. Yeah. Marketo's a Formula One car. I mean, this thing is just in and out of traffic and it's, it's uh, unbelievably nimble. So it's, it's been a big kind of shift culturally, mm -hmm. but absolutely love it. Well, for the folks that are watching, you might not know, um, but Steve was uh, in the HANA analytics, president of that division within right. SAP, which was a really interesting transformation because HANA and, and, and uh, SAP was a traditional big enterprise software company, yeah. but had to move very quickly. HANA was basically built before Hadoop was even conceived and it was built before the big cloud explosion, but kind of well built for the cloud. So you had to kind of move quickly. Oh yeah. From scratch into the cloud. Oh yeah. With SAP's resources. Yeah. So compare and contra contrast with, with your experience from SAP, what is Marketo's prospects? I mean, what's going on there? I mean, obviously you got a formula speedboat, but the big aircraft carriers are throwing up a pretty big wake. They are. How are you going to to maneuver. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a fascinating environment right now because, if, you know, going from SAP, I'd say that my experience there kind of highly tuned me or prepared me for what I'm doing at Marketo. SAP had to move nimbly at the time, really nimbly. You're entering a market where you've got Oracle, Microsoft at a database level. They're the incumbents. They own massive share. How does SAP penetrate that? But we were successful at the time at, at SAP, and I loved that experience. Coming into Marketo, really, I mean, it's a couple of things. One is you've got to out-innovate the competition. This is not rest on your laurels and wait for the re release a year and a half from now. That doesn't happen. So this is about moving quickly. But the second thing it's about, I, I believe, is it's all about putting the customer at the center of your strategy. They have to drive everything. Yeah. I've talked to more marketers and more CMOs in the last two months than I have in my last 20 years. Putting them at the center is all about that. And Marketo, their heritage was marketing solutions built by marketers for marketers. What are the people saying? You met with a lot of those CMOs more in the past, since the, uh, in the past two months. What are they saying? What's on their agenda? What do they care about? What's important to them? Brand, revenue, and impact. They want to know, how do I drive my brand? Uh, how do I drive revenue? And how do I show that impact to my CEO, the board, whomever it may be? But the thing that scares marketers right now the most is what is digital transformation changing relative, you know, the big trend, yeah. macro trend globally? How is it changing buyer expectation? How is yeah. it changing the customer brand relationship? That's top of mind. Peter Burris, who heads up our research for Wikibon, um, and he used to do the B2B practice at Forrester around digital, and Dave Vellante and I were talking yesterday that digital now is everything. Right, so if you look at digital, it's not just, oh, marketing needs some tools to send emails out, oh, yeah. or, oh, I need to get a website up, call IT up and provision a landing page. This is now a fabric of pure infrastructure. Yet the infrastructure was built in the web days, and you go back to your business object days and go back yeah. even, even back in the, in the 90s. That infrastructure now is so hardened as instrumentation, there's no agility. So the, I feel that, uh, and we hear in our, in our teams and our customers that I want agility, but I also want to control what the infrastructure might look like, but then I don't want to touch it again. I want it to work for me. Do you see that same dynamic and how does that play yeah. out? Because, I mean, it's kind of the, uh, a nuanced point, but at the end of the day, shadow marketing is going on. Shadow IT uh, oh, is, it is happening and it is. thoughts on this. Unequivocally, I mean, so the, the, it literally the, the, what's crushing the marketer right now is every time we get a new touch point, a, a, a watch. Mm -hmm. So we go from just a watch that tells me the time to an Apple watch, right? Every time there's a new touch point, 
there's a new point solution for it, and it's crushing the marketer. So if it's social, there's point solutions. If it's mobile, there's point solutions. If it's a watch, there's point solutions. I blew my mind. I literally saw a startup that says, we can do you know, monitoring and engagement of people on a watch. It's just, it's overwhelming the marketer. And so their landscape of applications is looking like 30, 40 different apps, and their big win, single sign-on. That's the big win for the marketer internally. Yep. It's just crushing them. So what they're looking for... Well, your point is the MarTech or marketing technology graph and map is so big. Oh. Each one with their own underlying stack, database, software, is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you pick a marketing cloud. It really doesn't matter. You could say Oracle's marketing cloud, Salesforce marketing cloud, Adobe's marketing cloud. It's just convoluted, the, the, the graph or chart of what's out there. So point solutions just put together, cobbled exactly. together. That's exactly right. And so we're- And the benefit or the, 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 the problem with that is what? Well, the, the problem with that is that, you, I mean, first of all, you lose any context relative to who you are. There's no way that I can, across 30 or 40 mm -hmm. systems, keep a consistent definition of John. It was yeah. just impossible to do. Yeah. And our notion is we're looking at, and what we're driving is a single engagement platform where the definition of you, who you are, no matter what touch point, how we listen to you, how we learn from you, and how we engage with you, it's all the same. It's all integrated. So let's get back to this point because I think an engagement platform and then the applications are interesting. So I mentioned the CMOs earlier. There's more development going on in marketing with like programmers developing apps because there's an app craze, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're using the cloud. And the marketing cloud is not like a, a one-off. It has to be part of the core infrastructure. So one of the things that Wikibon is going to be releasing a new research coming up, and I, I, I saw David Floyd yesterday, who's the head of the research uh, project, that they're going to show market share numbers of um, Amazon, Google, all the top cloud guys. Yeah. Interesting dynamic. PaaS is squeezing down. Platform as a service is being squeezed down and SaaS is increasing. And then IaaS, infrastructure service, is kind of shortening, That's which right. means there's automation in there. So that, the middle layer is gone, but yet there's more SaaS. How does that relate to the marketing cloud? Because the marketing cloud would be considered middleware, or is it just the SaaS app? And does that speak to an explosion of SaaS applications? Well, I mean, you're going to see an explosion of SaaS applications regardless. I mean, we, we reached that point of critical mass a while ago. That's, there's no going back at this mm -hmm. point. But if you look at kind of, I think you're absolutely right, there's compression at the IaaS layer and the PaaS layer, et cetera, because these, these, these larger kind of SaaS applications, they are really ruling the day. And if you look at how that applies to marketing, we actually think about three technology tiers within marketing. There's the listen, learn, and engage tier. The listen tier is, how do I listen on these digital channels, the myriad that are mm -hmm. out there? And then the learn tier is core to our platform, the, the engagement platform. It's all about an automation engine, an AI engine, and an analytics engine. It's learning. And then the engage tier is, how do I go back to those self-same channels I was listening to and engage you the way that you want to be touched? And so that's really the stack the, the, that comprises the Marketo engagement platform. And what's interesting, the dynamic for us is we're actually seeing our own native applications that we're building on our engagement platform. And then we have over 600 partners that are building applications application, have built, sorry, not building, applications on our engagement So they're platform. writing software on top of Marketo. Absolutely, so they're extending it. So if social listening, which I know is a big thing <laughs> for Silicon Angle, that's like, the, I mean, you guys are, are masters at it. The, the, if that's your thing, then we have a, not only do we have social listening capability, but there's an app for that. There's yeah. dozens so of So we them. could potentially plug into that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that's your vision. So, the vi so let's go back to the vision. So more apps, a platform that enables more satisfaction. Yeah. And, and you mentioned people building on it. That's an integration uh, challenge, and that's something that people, they want to do more of. They want to integrate other things with platforms, which could be a challenge, but it brings up the point, data. Where does the data sit? Because now the data is the crown jewel. Yes. And also, a very important aspect to get real-time information. So if you have information on me, you want to have access to that data fast. That's right. And so there's an architectural challenge there. There is. Your thoughts and reaction to the, the role of data. Well, I mean, first of all, marketers still want to own their data. And I think we need to, you know, the, the reality is, is that if you look a lot of the, at a lot of these marketing clouds that are out there, the, the vendor perspective is going to be, well, if I own your data, I own you. 
And our perspective is, well, you know, that your data can sit within our platform, but we can actually drive that data into, you know, on-premise warehouse, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, our goal is not to own your data, ergo we own you. That's not our goal. I, I think the big thing, like the context. Your job, you're saying is you want to use their data to give them value. Absolutely. And, and so for us, it's, it's a matter of, you know, we can. We can you got to protect their data, too. Exactly. And so for me, it's all about, you know, it's securing the data. It's, but it, it's also, the data is so complex now for the marketer. So you've got social data, highly unstructured, you know, mm -hmm. you're listening for keywords. You still have to interpret that information. You've got highly structured data, demographic, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's how do you bring all that together? You can bring that together in the Marketo engagement platform, mm -hmm. and then you can turn that into something meaningful. It's always funny. I always I love to interview the new CEOs because they've got the fresh perspective. But I can't ask the tough questions because you've only been there for two months. You can say, oh, I, I've only been there two months. I really can't answer that yep, question. I've got my so, um, I'll get more generic on that. Uh, what, uh, to try to get this, that some of the hidden questions that I like to expose for the audience, and really the main one is, what attracted you to Marketo? I mean, you left a pretty senior, very senior position at SAP, yeah. president, um, and Marketo is like the ship that's out there. It's a motorboat, but some are saying that the waves might be big enough, and so, you know, be like, okay, but they're a public company, so everything's out in the open. What attracted you to Marketo? Yeah. What got you to say, hey, you know what? I want to I want to ride this uh, yeah. speedboat. Well, the trigger point for me was, you know, especially at SAP, you get exposed to kind of the big macro trends. Big macro trend, everybody knows it, is digital transformation. SAP's talking that, Microsoft, it, Accenture, pick the big company, they're talking yeah. digital transformation. And it is real. The, the reality is you either are a digital native company, you were born digital, Uber or you're going digital, i.e., you know, you're, you're a hospitality company trying to compete with Airbnb and you gotta go digital. So it's, I wrote yeah. an article on, on go digital or die, right? That's, that's, the, that's the notion. And when I looked at that, I said, so how does that lens apply to marketing? Well, the reality is, is that the marketer in the digital economy is only going to win if they can engage with not two or three people, but millions Mm -hmm. in an authentic and personalized manner at scale. So that is, it's kind of juxtaposed. How do you do that? How do you engage with millions of people but at scale but deliver personalized and authentic experience? And I looked at Marketo and I saw this platform and I just said, oh my gosh, they, they are, they, there's like this, this convergence of those two things that are going to happen. And I just think that the whole uh, kind of marketing automation space, which is known as really, I, I, I want to transform that into the engagement space. We're talking about things like this engagement economy trend. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I absolutely believe we are fully in this notion of the engagement economy. I think Marketo is right there. So I got to ask you a question because this is interesting. You mentioned getting personalized information. One of the things that's apparent, we talk about this on my Silicon Valley Friday show. If you go to soundcloud.com slash John Furrier, the people watching can get the, 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 the copies of those. But the thing was the recent election highlighted an issue around trust, right? Fake yes. news, um, younger di natives, digital natives, younger kids. They actually don't know what fake news is and what real news is. A lot of people are moving off cable TV into digital, which opens up the Snapchats of the world, different channels, omni-channel-like things. Um, and so this brings up this notion of communities, because what people are turning to in this time of no trusting the mainstream media or right. news or Trump or what everyone's saying, it's causing a lot of fear. But it highlights an issue, which is what's real and what's not, it's content, Content is also has a relationship with users. Content is marketing. Yeah. Um, Content is king. Trust is now a huge deal. How do marketers now deal with the fact that Content marketing coming from a company, it could be uh, fake news, but is it real or not? And how do they get the contextual connections? Um, is it the communities? Uh, we see that in election, people kind of going back to their tribe and saying, oh, anti-Trump or for Trump or whatever. Right. So tribal communities are a big part of yeah. the data. It is. What's your thoughts on this trust factor and data and the content? Yeah, yeah. Well, so I think, I mean, a couple things. First of all, um, you know, the, the, I, I think you or I as a consumer, you know, or anybody really, we don't respond well to sterile, moderately creepy advertisements that show up that, you, you know, you know, okay, you're tracking my cookie, you know, in my browser. That is just, that's a non-starter. I think that that in and of itself is, is not interesting. Now, we respond well to, as I said, that, that kind of personalized, and I use that word, authentic content. Mm -hmm. So if there's content, it's not just, hey, I know that you visited, you know, three websites about cars, so I'm just going to pump you with ads full of cars. But if we deliver thoughtful content, it could be 
a comparison of vehicles that you've been looking at and, and take a look. So there's more thoughtful content that you can deliver that, that I think can come through a, a MarTech platform like what we have, our engagement platform. Now, I, I will tell you that, that trust, uh, to me, it's, it's not just the, the authentic nature, mm -hmm. it's also a consistent engagement. You can't show up, show me an ad one time and I'm just gonna buy from you. It doesn't work that way anymore. So it's about having a relationship digital at scale, but you know, it's, it's delivering that human touch. I wrote a blog on this where I said, how do you deliver the human touch at scale? What's your blog address? Is it, uh, was it on? It's on Marketo's website, Marketo's, actually. Okay. Yeah, right on our website. So we talked about that as well. And as companies are moving away from you or I managing the social engagement to the AI engines, the machines engaging with us, I think that we run the risk, the marketer runs the risk of reinforcing the sterile you know, kind of engagement. And that's not what we want. We want warmth and human touch. That breeds trust. So what's Marketo's technology? I mean, people look at Marketo and, and people in marketing general, ah, they just hire an agencies to do all this work. There's some real MarTech marketing technology going on. Highlight some of the technology for yeah. the folks watching because yeah. I think it's pretty interesting. Most people don't understand that there's a lot of machine learning, a lot of technology involved oh, yeah. in databases. Yep. Um, from security to trust to also enabling real time. Yeah. Share some insight into what's going on there. So so this so this notion of engagement platform, which we believe is is just fundamentally different than your run of the mill marketing cloud. So the engagement platform for Marketo is all about that listen, learn, and engage kind of methodology that we think about. And the listening notion, as I said, literally is we can listen to anything, your custom data, social channels, smoke signals if we had to. We can read and consume almost anything. And if we can't do it, one of our partners can with like a DMP, for example. The learn, the core of our engagement engine, and this is pretty neat. So we have three engines in our engagement engine. We have the automation engine, which is all about, I hear you say something on Facebook, I can engage with you. Then there's the uh, uh, analytics engine. So I can help you understand what are people talking about on Facebook? What are they talking about on LinkedIn? And then there's the AI engine. Now this is where I think the, the merger of the marketer and the machine is going to start coming together in a big, big way. So our AI engine allows you to not just say, well, if people say Silicon Angle on Twitter, then send them this. But you can actually have it adapt and customize. And learn and reason. Learn and reason. So That's figure right. things out and do some prescriptive. That's or right. Pres predictive. Uh, oh, on, on, not, not only just predictive, actually have it, I think it's borderline kind of clairvoyant, but understand, well, I'm not just going to immediately react to something that you put on Twitter. I'm going to go and I'm going to check the rest of your digital persona that so we define. So it's a define. digital assistant, basically, not a sales rep. It's more of an assistant. It is. Know. It is. And, and so the, the future of marketing is simple. I can build a marketing or an engagement yep. campaign, and I can click a button that says, make it adaptive. And then that's when the machine and the marketer come together. And so on top of that engine, we have our marketing applications, our native apps like um, uh, marketing automation. We have a new one, account-based marketing, which is a pretty big deal, uh, especially in the enterprise. Account-based marketing is all about going from the single buyer to the consensus buying, the you know, behavior that you see in the enterprise. And then we have other technologies like mobile marketing, so we can track when you open an app, if you close it, if you click on it. So it's not just one thing. We have a, a range of marketing apps that sit on the platform. All right, so I want to get the final question. I want to get your thoughts on just the future of the business. Obviously, you're, you're there two months. Um, you got to get to know the team. You got to get to know the players. Um, any changes on the horizon that you'd like to shout? So you got a big launch coming up with the Orion code name Orion, which is That's there. Right. You're a new engagement platform that you guys pre-announced. You got the announcement coming up. There, you got a book going on. But you know, for Marketo, what's the guiding north star for you? What do you, what do you uh, say to customers in, in, in kind of the vision and and what changes do you look that might be coming down the pike? Yeah. So I think so. The vision, really. I mean, we, there's two elements to that. One is that our, our core focus, uh, like at its core, is we're going to help the CMO build the lasting relationship, drive revenue for the company. And the way that we're going to do that is deliver the engagement platform, which we are now rolling out. I mean, we've been working on Orion for a long time, way before I showed up. And Orion takes the ability for a marketer to go from millions of interesting touch points per year, social, mobile, di you know, digital touch points to quadrillions of touch points. We are ready for that digital transformation, what we call the engagement economy era. I'm writing a book on the, the, yeah. the whole notion of engagement economy. We're entering this new era where if you're not able to engage with people and, and, uh, and also things, mm -hmm. <laughs> because things will yeah. be out there too, at scale, you won't win. 
Yeah. You just won't win. I want to get your thoughts on one final point. I know we're kind of up, running up on time and on this, this segment, but if you look at the cloud, going back to 2008, 2007 timeframe, when it really emerged and Amazon's already you know, had a couple years under their belt with what they were doing, you saw the DevOps movement develop Merging mm. development and operations yeah. be the real catalyst. Those yeah. early adopters, you know, those you know, Navy SEALs, the Green Berets, you know, eating nails and spitting glass out. So, so that was Facebook. That was uh, uh, the big web scalers. Yahoo essentially invented Hadoop, which became big data. You saw all these companies that were new natives build their own stuff, not buy off the shelf equipment. Yeah, and right. they became the, the the canary in the coal mine for everybody else. Now everyone wants to be like AWS. Even Microsoft's changing to be more like AWS and competing directly with them. Google's changing. So those early guys and Facebook, what they're doing with drones and virtual reality and yeah. all that, the stuff they're doing with open, open uh, uh, compute, those are now leaders. So they are the uh, predictors of the future, in my opinion. That's how I look at it. So the question I want to ask you is, how does Marketo rank up? Because companies that don't have huge... Um, early adopters of the that's scale right. side right. of it. Um, platforms that can't scale probably won't have any headroom. So do you have an example where your business has guys pushing the tech, scaling it up, that are going to be that canary in the coal mine? Do you guys have yeah. that mix of business? Can you give some examples? Yeah, I mean, we have, first of all, we have fantastic customers that are using us today kind of- At in, scale? Oh, at scale, absolutely. Whether it's a, a, a GE, for example. GE is literally attributing billions in revenue to the, the, the Marketo engine and, and the, the campaigns and efforts that they're driving through that. But GE is a perfect example. Microsoft, another great one. There's lots of great examples of customers of ours that are doing what I would I would call hyperscale uh, uh, in, uh, engagement with in marketing data and everything. with marketing data, et cetera, et cetera. So they're using so, your tools at large, large scale. Yeah, and I'd say it's the scale that that today you get these hyperscale example points. But tomorrow, everybody is going to have to do it. It's just what's neat for us. Do you though, see the same thing I was mentioning that those hyperscales are going to be the you know the pioneers that are going to let the settlers come in and and behind yeah. them, do you yeah. see that model? Unequivocally. And the neat part for us is, is because as a marketing automation technology or an engagement platform, we're fully integrated with Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. So they actually pull us forward. We get that, I think we get that, um, we've got the telescope to see the canary in the coal mine a little mm -hmm. bit further down the road, assuming it's a well-lit coal mine. But um, we get to see that a little bit further down the road. So I, it's an advantage for us strategically. So I'm going to ask you the question because in the database world, there's systems of record, there's systems of engagement, and then systems of, AI, IBM calls it cognitive. Yes. How do you guys play in that new era? Is that just all um, marketing for them? Well, I mean, everybody has their. Does kind of, cognitive exist? Yeah, it, and well, do you have something? It, so, there, the, every, to a degree, so everyone has tech, and, and we certainly have what, what I characterize as adaptive and intuitive. That's my version of AI. You know, I think saying artificially intelligent, it's kind of like I've met a bunch of teenagers that I consider to be artificially intelligent, but the reality is, is that. Um, Everybody to a degree has this brochure layer tech that they run around waving. It really comes down to what's practical, what's usable. And for us, that's what we're focused on is what is adaptive and intuitive technology that's going to merge the marketer and the machine. Final question, final, final question is what's the top three priorities for you? If we look back on your performance next year, this time, what are the top three things you want to accomplish as the new CEO of Marketo? Well, uh, uh, number one, champion the engagement economy. Uh, th that, that whole, we're there, and I think people just need to understand what it is. Two is, is help the marketer win. I mean, the, the reality is, if you boil it down, you ask the question, what does the marketer want? They want to win. They just want to win, help their company win. And so we want to help the marketer win. And then three is really engage our marketing nation. We've got a community, uh, an online community, you talked about communities, over 100,000 marketers that are working inside of that community. It's just absolutely huge. And so I want to engage the community. If we can do that and be just customer centric and oriented, our technology, the AI, all of those things, part of our engagement platform, it's going to help us win too. Steve, congratulations on being the CEO, Chief Executive Marketo, great Thank to you. see you. Steve Lucas here inside theCUBE in Palo Alto's new studios here in, in Palo Alto, 4,500 square feet, you can see a lot more content live, programming, as well as featured interviews with top CEOs of Silicon Valley and top technology companies. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.